Hello, my name is Caleb Bachman, and today I'll be talking to you about T.H. Morgan. T.H. Morgan won the Nobel Prize of Medicine back in 1933 for his chromosome theory of heredity, which led to a major breakthrough in the field of genetics. And uh, his study really did make a big impact, though, and really led to a lot of the things that we understand about genetics today, uh, how heredity and genes and chromosomes, all that works. And it truly is remarkable the things that he accomplished in his lifetime. Which is why I'm going to be dedicating this video to telling you about T.H. Morgan, as well as his experiments that led to his discoveries and conclusions that led us to where we are today. Uh, and so I'm going to be spending most of this video giving an in-depth explanation of his experiments. But before I get into that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about his personal life. So here we go. Okay, so... Thomas Hunt Morgan was born in Lexington, Kentucky on September 25, 1866, and lived until December 4, 1945. Morgan lived in a time when the United States was still a very young country, so everyone kind of knew each other and many of them played important roles in the development of our nation. Morgan came from a very influential family at that time, because his father, Charlton Hunt Morgan, served on the U.S. Consul, and his uncle, John Hunt Morgan, was in fact a general in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. Also, his great-grandfather on his mother's side of the family was none other than Francis Scott Key, who you may know as the author of the Star-Spangled Banner, which is our national anthem. There's also many other historically significant figures in his family, so having been raised in such a family, it truly is no wonder that Morgan grew up to become such an influential person during his lifetime. Who knows? Maybe it was even in his genes, but we'll talk more about that later. T.H. Morgan became a very well-educated man. In 1886, he received a Bachelor of Science in Zoology over at the State College of Kentucky, which is now the University of Kentucky. He then went on and received his graduate degree in biology over at John Hopkins University. There is where he studied under William Keith Brooks. He then went on and got his PhD in 1890. He stayed there another year, but then he took up a teaching position at Bryn Mawr College. Having laid such a strong scientific background with his higher education, he was then set up to accomplish many great things. During the time frame from 1893 until 1910, he was primarily interested in the field of embryology, in which he did a lot of research regarding the development of embryos. He was also interested in fertilization factors, such as the orientation, or perhaps the salt concentration of eggs. When he was conducting this research, he met a fellow embryologist named Lillian B. Sampson, who was a graduate student there. He ended up marrying her in 1904, which was the same year he was offered a position as being a professor over at Columbia University. This university is where he ended up conducting most of his research, which led to his breakthroughs in heredity, even though embryology was his first love with regards to research. Now what you see here is a plaque made in honor of T.H. Morgan and his many accomplishments and contributions to the scientific field during the course of his life. As you can see, he had many fields of interest, not only embryology, which I just discussed, but also that of zoology, naturalism, and cytology. But I think just about everybody would agree that his greatest contribution was that to the field of genetics, in which his chromosome theory of heredity ultimately led to him winning the Nobel Prize in Physiology, or Medicine, back in 1933. Winning the Nobel Prize is no small feat and is truly one of the highest honors that anyone can receive, especially that in the field of science, which you may be asking yourself, what led him to study heredity rather than embryology? Well, the answer to that question is one person's name, which is none other than Charles Darwin, whose theory of evolution was found startling to many. And Darwinism was a highly debated topic at that time, but it was also a very intriguing one because the scientists wanted to know about how he came about. So Morgan decided he would take a look into the matter himself. Having had Mendel's research with the pea plant experiments resurface, there is now a foundation in the field of genetics that Morgan could work with. This ultimately led to him conducting his research in heredity by crossbreeding fruit flies. Now, in order to clear up any confusion, let it be said that crossbreeding fruit flies does not mean he crossbred a piece of fruit with a fly. That would be preposterous. But what this actually refers to is Drosophila melanogaster, which is just nicknamed a fruit fly. And so when he crossbred the Drosophila, he noticed that some traits were passed on differently than others, which sparked his interest and caused him to dive deeper into his research. It is believed that he started studying Drosophila melanogaster back in 1908, and the specific occurrence that really caught his attention is when he saw one random wide-eyed fly in the middle of his red-eyed colony. In order to investigate this peculiarity, 
he decides to breed the wide-eyed male with a red-eyed female. Their offspring, the F1 generation, yielded all red-eyed flies. But interestingly, the second generation, the F2, had both red-eyed and wide-eyed flies. And what was even more strange was that um, only the wide eyes were male. This was very peculiar and led him to develop his sex-linked trait theory, which basically says that some genes are inherited on the X chromosome, thus meaning some traits are gender-specific. This is very interesting to the scientific community. He received more help and more funding to further his research. He began working with other scientists from Columbia University, such as A. H. Stewartvent, C. B. Bridges, and H. J. Muller. And together, they worked on the Drosophila melanogaster research, which was now a large-scale endeavor. And they learned many exciting things about the heritability of traits and how they're passed on from one generation to the next. One major breakthrough they had was that they learned that Mendelian genes were located on specific locations of the chromosome. This led to the idea of gene mapping. After many long years of working on this project, Morgan spent a little less time with Drosophila and spent more time in embryology because he knew there was a correlation between that and heritability. He wanted to learn more about evolution, which he eventually accepted. But over the years working with Drosophila, he had many exciting breakthroughs that really shaped the scientific world, including his paper in 1915 called The Mechanisms of Mendelian Inheritance, which the scientific community widely accepted and really made a breakthrough in genetics today. That's where he had his chromosome theory of heritability, which ultimately led him to win the Nobel Prize. I hope that you enjoyed this video on T.H. Morgan and that you found it educational. It truly is amazing to consider all the things that he accomplished in his lifetime with something as small as Drosophila. But without his work, Mendel's experiments would have been left unfinished and we would have a very limited understanding of genetics today, which is why I believe he is very deserving of winning the Nobel Prize in 1933.